Hello, my name is Vitaly and I want to show you today how to edit stills using DaVinci Resolve. So first of all, let's create a new project. Call it stills. Then we go to the project settings. What's important here in master project settings, we choose the color science DaVinci YRGB color managed. What this allows us to do is actually go to the color management tab and here as an input color space to choose sRGB image. The same we do for actually timeline color space and output color space. Then what's important we go to the editing and here we change the standard still duration from 5 seconds to 1 frame. And uh, actually that's all we need to do. These are some some things because of uh, I changed my drive settings. Uh, so now let's go to uh, my Capture One catalog to choose a file I want to grade. Actually, I like this image. This is my father, and I want to. This is the image is taken from uh, my Nikon D750 uh, camera, and I want to grade it today. Uh, uh, so I go to the export tab and I want to export this image as a TIFF using also sRGB or let's say Adobe RGB format in 8-bit. Actually there is no big difference between 8-bit and 16-bit uh, or there is no difference at all. You won't you won't see it by eye. Uh, so then I change the maximum width of my uh, still to let's say 8000 pixels. So it will be 2 by 4 approximately 2 by 4 uh, thousand dimensions and it will be about 8 megapixel photo. And then I just uh, choose the file the, the the folder where I want to export it and here it is on my desktop in my TIFF folder. Ah, here it is. Now I go to DaVinci Resolve and you see the resolution of this file is about two or four thousand by two and a half thousand. Then I go to my DaVinci Resolve and I see in my desktop TIFF folder this image but before I edit, before I edit um, to my media pool I also go to the project settings and I change uh, the timeline resolution to the maximum that is allowed. And in this case it's uh, almost 8 megapixel timeline. Click save. This is a setup of my drives. Click OK. Now I add my media images to my media pool. Go to the timeline and create a new timeline using this still. And here it is. Uh, I can add multiple images here and when I click to my color uh, my color tab uh, I can switch between my images and my time and to grade them step by step. So uh, what I like about this photo is actually uh, the separation of green background on the right side and uh, another very beautiful I think background on the left side. Uh, and I will 
try to make it more clear for you. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is create a, a custom curve and I'll choose my right side by ground then I create another node and choose my left side what I'm gonna do here is actually ah by the way yeah what's important uh, to make it really soft I change the borders and add some softness here the same I do here on the left side and then I begin to manipulate so I want to make this right background uh, a little bit more yellowish And by the way, what's going on now? Uh, ah, this is my left side, I'm sorry. So I'll rename and change the label to left. And this is my right side, right background. Uh, so I'll reset the left one and start to work with right here I want to make it a little bit more yellowish in the highlights and midtones and my left side I want to make more more purplish uh, now it's looking very very strange first of all because uh, I need to uh, add more more edges and more softening and then uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I go to my keyer and dial here let's say uh, 0 .0 0 0.0.5 point five and now it's going to look much much better and the same here okay I like it the next thing I'm gonna do is apply uh, a 3d LUT actually I like to use this film look codec d55 I change a little bit of the curve so before and after so it it makes the image look a little bit more contrasty and film lookish uh, and now the next layer I'm gonna do is create a, also a power window to blur the background to make I mean yet. Let's make it this way. I change it to outside and change gamma a little bit of lift and a little bit of gain. So bef after before and after maybe a little bit too much of, of yeah, well, I, I just reset it uh, the shadows uh, now it looks already much much better the next thing I create another layer so here is my uh, vignette I also change the label to vignette and here in this node I will change I. Uh, 
for that I also create a power window, a small one, just to cover my father's eye. Make it soft. Yeah, something like that. And I will create another, I will copy this window, create another circle window and paste the settings, the size. So actually I make a copy of this window. Uh, and what I want to do is uh, increase the saturation and add a little bit of blue to highlights and maybe even make it a little bit more so this is before and this is after a bit of too much of saturation too much and too much uh, So before and after, maybe a little bit of gamma also, the bluish. Before and after. So very, very slight change, but it makes the eye really pop out. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, work with the skin. So I have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful power grade. I apply it. I go to the settings of this compound node. You see it's already keyed. And then what I need to change is the low and high frequency separation of the skin. And by the way, I also create a, a window just to work with the, with the head. Let's make it, yeah, this way. And uh, all, all the settings of this compound node is uh, actually this tab, blur tab, using my radius. I can change the softness of the skin or hardness. See the difference? So I apply the softness. This is before and this is after. Yeah. I like it. Maybe a little bit too much. Something like 10% of softening the high frequency separation. Uh, and the last thing I want to do is uh, add another node to pop up the entire body. just a little bit of gamma and gain. See before. Now first of all let's let's play with this node. Before. Now oh, this is too much, way too much. I'm sorry. Before. and after, before and after. Maybe I need to make it more gentle. Before and after. Now I like it. 
and if I switch all the nodes, you see this is the image before, and this is the image after. The next thing I do is go to deliver page. I go to the custom custom video, and here instead of choosing QuickTime or AV, I choose TIFF, 8-bit, uncompressed, in Ultra HD resolution, edit to render queue, choose my desktop, and start render. It's ready. I go then back to my capture one. And I will import this image from my desktop. Here it is, the new one. I import it back to capture one. And here what I want to do is uh, add a little bit of grain, salt grain to the image. Now here you see, it's looking already very, very good. This one, this, this kind of amount is enough. And I also want to crop, crop this image like, let's say like this. So this is uh, actually final image. I like it and I used a lot of instruments in DaVinci that are missing in Capture One and that uh, and uh, maybe these kind of instruments presented in Adobe Photoshop but uh, you know they are much much more difficult to use there in my opinion as a mainly videographer so thank you very much and I hope this tutorial was helpful click like and subscribe